All right, cool, so my mic works, awesome. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was actually the inspiration for Chris's beard. So, fun fact. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right, so just a bit about me. Uh, like Chris said, I work for Red Hat on the Air Gear project, and I'm the JS tech lead, uh, a name drop there, nice. I also really dislike the 1990s cowboys, uh, being from upstate New York, that they, they were just a pain in the ass. Um, to keep the theme of, of um, favorite tags, my favorite tag is the A tag, and that's mostly because when I went to MDN a few minutes ago, it was the first tag on the list. So, and I also uh, i am a lover of shiny objects, so that's sort of why I'm giving this Chromecast talk and everything. And apparently I also love breakfast as well, so. Uh, here are some links if you want to stalk me or, you know, follow me, I guess, on the internet, uh, Twitter, uh, Google+. Plus. Uh, my, there's my blog and, and IRC. Uh, you can find me at L. Holmquist. So a quick disclaimer uh, on this on this talk. Uh, I was talking to some people at lunch yesterday, and they were uh, asked me what my elevator pitch was for this. And the guy sitting right over there, actually. Uh, and I was like, well, it's fun and it has shiny objects in it. So you know, if if you're looking for sort of production uh, stuff that you can use in your in your actual uh, apps and all that stuff, you probably might want to go to the talk over there. Uh, hopefully this will be a very fun talk, and I'm, I crack up at the jokes in there, so in here, so we'll, we'll see how they go. Okay, so a quick poll. Uh, who actually knows what the Chromecast is, right? Oh, well, good, good amount of people here. Here it is right here. Woo. I'm sure all, everybody can see this very, very well. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, who uses some t type of streaming media device, whether it's Chromecast or Apple TV, Roku, or you know some other crazy thing. Uh, now, this next joke, anybody heard the internet? Yeah, uh, Jen actually stole that from me yesterday uh, during her talk, so that kind of, yeah. And also, uh, anybody uh, pre-order the iPhone 6? Uh, was it yesterday or a couple days ago? One person, two people, nice, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I gotta wait next, until next year, because, you know, it'll rise and whatever, so. Anyway, so, uh, so exactly what is this Chromecast thing? Uh, so what better to explain than this screenshot taken from Google, uh, from Chromecast homepage, uh, is that it is a, uh, a thumb-sized device that basically plugs into your TV that allows you to stream media um, and other things um, to, your, to your TV. Uh, all right, so actually, uh, let's go back one there. Yeah, so actually it came out, so, about a year ago it came out, uh, it's 35 bucks, and it was a very shiny object, so I bought it, and it goes very well, sort of with all the other stuff that's collecting dust on my shelf, um, so, but it actually is kind of cool, and we'll see in a minute why that is. So basically, this is just another little diagram of how it works. Um, you plug in, you're, you have a receiver, which is uh, basically just a app. You plug that into your TV, and then you have your sender, which could be uh, you know, a web page or an iOS device or an Android device or something like that. And then the actual, like, app itself lives in the cloud, um, you know. And then, so this opens up to yet another app store kind of thing, which is what we need more of. Not really, so. So for the rest of this talk, I'm actually gonna be talking about the, um, what, when I'm talking about Chromecast uh, and the SDKs going forward, I'm gonna be talking about sort of how they pertain to web pages and, uh, like Chrome and Google Chrome. Uh, if you were expecting me to show off an iOS example, uh, you're probably in the wrong conference because this is a JavaScript conference, so yeah. Okay, so for the sender, basically the sender in this case, since we're talking about Chrome, is just a web page or it could be a Chrome app, whatever which is just basically HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I'm not sure if you guys knew that, that it's actually a web page, is, is those bits of information. Uh, it might be new to you, I don't know. Um, you also need to have the Chromecast extension installed um, on your browser. Uh, that's what actually does the uh, finding and um, kind of marshalling or whatever, what have you, uh, between the, the app and then the actual device. And you also need to have the Chrome Sender API uh, injected onto your page, which is basically just one line of uh, in, uh, a script tag. And then there, the other part of it is the receiver, and that's actually a web page, which is just, again, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, because nobody knew what a web page was here. 
Um, so that actually, uh, so on the Chromecast, it actually runs a modified version of Chrome OS, which you know gets auto updated like every other Chrome, Chrome thing. So basically, it's just really running a Chrome, essentially a small Chrome browser within the device. And of course, you also need the Chrome Receiver API, uh, which again is just a script tag in in your HTML. So here's just a little uh, another diagram of uh, to show sort of what the receiver looks like. Um, you have your, your Google Cast device, which is running Chrome, essentially, which is running your receiver application, which is a web page. Uh, and then that goes, um, and then when somebody connects to it, it goes to, through the network to you, whatever, wherever your, uh, your web page or your uh, receiver app is being hosted, and it gets all the stuff. So yeah. So there's actually uh, not just one kind of receiver, there's, there's, there's a couple. So let's see what they are. Of course, you have a wide receiver. Uh, there's hand radio receivers. Um, you know, actually, I used to have one of these in, in my parents' basement, which is which is cool. Uh, you, don't forget about your home theater receivers. And oh, look, that one's THX certi certified. I don't know if that's a still a thing. I know it was when I was in high school and stuff. Anyone here, class of '98? Anybody? Woo! All right, cool, nice. All right, so. But with regards to the with regards to the Chromecast, uh, there's actually two. Uh, one is a media receiver, and the other one is a custom receiver. So you can do, you guessed it, custom things. So and so this actually is a, a very simple diagram to show you uh, how to determine what kind of receiver you need. Very very simple uh, to figure out. And of course they have all kinds of UX guidelines and, and all that stuff. This actually wasn't meant for you to read. Just they have a lot of stuff. But um, my favorite one is this in the guidelines, is the receiver should not have any uh, interactive elements. So when I read that, immediately I thought of probably you know, the line uttered by one of probably the greatest actors of our time, and that is, I must break you. And of course, I was going to do the accent, but I'm terrible at accents, so I'll spare you that. Um, so, so thinking about this and how it shouldn't have any interactive elements and how I need to break the rules, you know, I thought that maybe I could do more. Um, so I thought, well, why, I, I, I don't want to just do streaming media. How can I break the rule? Um, and you really need to sort of understand this Chromecast. Um, so what can I do? Uh, uh, so a fun fact, uh, Jimmy Fallon uh, is actually went to my high school, if you, in case you didn't know. And that's actually Jimmy Fallon right there doing the cowbell. Uh, actually, I'm kidding. That's the guy. That's the drummer from Red Hot Chili Peppers. So yeah. <laughs> Good, well, uh, good, I got one guy, nice. So uh, I decided to go on a trip, a little vacation with the Chromecast, uh, spend some time with this little, this little device to see if we could you know, come up with something cool to do. So first, we went to South America, to Peru, to uh, and climb Machu Picchu. Uh, and while it was beautiful and, and, and everything, we took our little selfie there. Um, we, were, we weren't really close to any kind of enlightenment to figure out you know, what, what we should do at all. So after that, we decided, okay, let's go, let's go to India, right? <laughs> another, another selfie. Uh, go check out the Taj Mahal, you know. But it was, it was nice. It was, it was cool, you know. But uh, nothing, nothing. So, so then we went to Egypt. And I actually visited Egypt in 2001. And I was there, you know, it was very eye-opening and, and, and it was great. So I figured maybe going back might, might spur something. But it did not. So we decided to just come back to the States. You know, and see somewhere else we can find enlightenment. Of course, that was at a fish show. Now I'm a huge fish fan, and because I've read the Helping Friendly book and I knew, you know, the tale of the lizards and everything, you know, the trick was to surrender to the flow, um, to to figure this out. And anybody read the Helping Friendly book here at all? No. Okay. I think I just saw a tumbleweed roll by. Um, so. <laughs> So right, so um, you know, it was sort of deep within the second set of this fish show that I sort of did start surrendering to the flow here, and things sort of became a little bit clearer. And I started having these visions of what I could do, um, and I was like, well, you know, I, I think I can go buy, you know, I can go past Netflix and streaming Netflix or streaming some other video service, and maybe I can actually like play like an HTML5 game or something. It is just really web pages that are being loaded here. So that's when I decided, OK, let's make some sort of HTML5 game console kind of thing. Uh, so a high level of the sender that we would have would basically live on your device or your, 
or your, your laptop or something, and then you could control the game, and the games themselves would actually live in the cloud. Um, you know, that's where the receiver would live. So there, I had some concerns over this. Uh, of course, the Chromecast is very low powered and has very low resources compared to you know, your laptop and stuff like that. There's no controller port. Um, I also was concerned about using the stock image for this. Couldn't really find anything. Um, so, but you know, it was, it was about this time that I actually got pressure from uh, somebody to submit a talk to this conference. And I needed something really cool. So I figured, hey, this is kind of a cool thing. Uh, I'm not really sure if it works at all, but I'll submit the talk anyway. Of course, it got accepted, so I was like, oh, crap. So now I gotta actually figure out if it actually works. <laughs> so I had no idea if this will actually work. So, but spoiler alert, yeah, it actually does. <laughs> For the most part, mostly. It mostly does, but we'll see. So a very important step one to this whole process after you know, I, I got accepted to figure this out was, all right, I need to figure out how to write a game. I have no idea how to write games at all. And of course I had some, uh, I, I did have some goals I did want to accomplish in this thing. I wanted to have fun. Kind of wanted to learn a little bit uh, you know, of something. And, and once it became not fun, then I just didn't want to do it anymore because it was not fun anymore. Uh, so of course I needed to think, what, was, now what is the most essential part of any game that's out there? And you probably guessed it, explosions. Well, maybe for a Michael Bay game, I guess, is explosions. Uh, but yeah, but the actual real important thing is the engine. So, that, and at least that's what I heard on the internet was that, you know, the engine for a game is probably pretty important. So I came up with a very scientific way of figuring it out. What I did was I went to Google, started typing in, um, as soon as that types, yep, started typing in uh, HTML5 game open source, and then clicked on one. As you can see, I already clicked on that when I took the video, because it was green. All right. Found the first one on the list, clicked on that, and then said, OK, yeah, this one, yeah, looks pretty good. Clicked on that, and that loads, right? And then I said, oh, Quintus. Yeah, OK, that looks pretty good. I'll take that. So that's how, that's how I chose Quintus. So just a quick word. Um, on our website, it said it was, it was easy to learn. That was one of my goals. It was fun to use. Hey, that's, there's another one. It's a JavaScript HTML5 game engine. Hey, I need, I need that. I need, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing something in JavaScript. And it's for mobile, desktop, and beyond. And hey, there's the word beyond in the title of my talk. So, so that kind of works, too. Um, another thing is it actually has some modularity to it. So you can add in, uh, t things that you need or take things out if you, if you don't need certain things. And I guess that's a thing these days. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so, and the other cool thing that was, that was this is actually had a cool example because I'm very lazy and I didn't want to actually really have to write my, my own game. So I decided to take the example that they had. And they had this cool platforming game. I like to call that guy Steve. I don't know. I, he just seems like a Steve. I mean, he was really cool. So, yeah, kind of like a Mario platformer. It's going to be, you know, Steve Brothers maybe. I don't know. So anyway, um, so that was the game that I wanted to try to get onto the Chromecast to play. So to do that, we need to sort of, now we need to set up this app. Um, and yes, this is the boring part. So if you guys want to check Facebook or Twitter or you know, whatever social networks you guys use and email and stuff, this is, this is the boring part. So, so uh, you know, Google Cast has a, uh, a, a developer console. Um, so you go to that, and of course, this would probably look different tomorrow because Google likes to change their dev consoles uh, every day, pretty much. If anybody's familiar with like trying to set up uh, anything on Google's, yeah. So um, right. So I go here, hit, add new applications. Okay, do I want a customer style media receiver? So I go back to my very simple chart here, follow that down. Um, and I pick, oh yeah, okay, I need, I need a custom receiver, cool. So I enter in some, some information there and the URL where my, where my receiver app's gonna live, and cool, I have my new super cool, awesome application. Um, so then you can click back in there and you can add you know, some things like a category or, or whatever, and an icon, that kind of thing. So when it shows up on like the Chrome's uh, app store thingy that they have there, it'll have a nice little icon. But the, real, the thing we really need is the, the, uh, the, uh, the application ID there, because we'll need that to um, use that in our sender. 
So here is, uh, the, I believe, the first bit of code in this whole talk. So you guys uh, were patient. Here's some code if you wanted to see it. Um, so that first, the first thing is the, where you would add the script tag. You know, you add that in your HTML page. That's just to load the, um, the sender API, and it's recommended to load it from here and not actually download it and uh, you know have it in your have a, a hard copy uh, because it may change. So if you do it this way, it'll always get a, a fresh copy from their servers. Um, so the first thing really is sort of wait till the Chromecast sender is loaded, um, and then after that, you can request a session from the uh, from the Chromecast API using that app ID. And then there's an API config, like a session listener, a uh, receiver listener that you set up a little bit. And then you initialize it. And that's pretty much it, really, for the sender app part of it. And then on, on the receiver app, which, again, is just our, gonna be our uh, example that I showed before, that game example, um, in the HTML uh, page, you would add that uh, script tag that's to load the, um, the cast receiver. And it's the same thing goes for that. Uh, you want to uh, make sure you, you're using the hosted version of that. And then um, you just get a new instance of the cast receiver manager. Uh, there's a couple optional things, whether you, know, you can listen for the on sender connected or disconnected. Those are, those are optional. And then you just say, you call, you know, you call start, and it starts up. So not too tough. So here, I actually got it on screen. So let's see a video of this. Um, so I'm actually videotaping this with my, my iPhone in case anybody really cares off of a monitor because, uh, yeah. So, so right, cool. So, that's on, so now this is running on, my, on uh, a monitor through the Chromecast. But uh, as you can see in that picture in picture, there is a problem. Anybody guess what the actual problem is here? So it's actually not moving at all. I'm hitting the keys, but the device, uh, the, the stuff on the device isn't moving, so that's kind of a problem. And uh, you know, you can't plug and controller anywhere into this thing. There's no like little, you know, joystick or whatever. So you had to come up with something else. So Chromecast actually has the uh, concept of a message bus, which is pretty much just a web socket essentially, to uh, to the device. So uh, to use the message bus, message bus, very hard to say. Um, there's a couple things you need to do. Like you need to define a message pro protocol. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll be using JSON. Uh, you have to define a namespace for the channel that you want to send across, and it, and it has to start with that uh, URN colon cast thing, and then you know after that it can be whatever you want. And uh, the the protocol also says that it's a sort of a best effort for delivery. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So let's just see now. Um, sort of how to set that up on the uh, on the receiver end here. So um, I'm sort of duplicating that get instance code or whatever. But um, from that receiver manager that we have, we can get the cast message bus. We we give it the uh, the namespace that we created and what kind of protocol we're using, uh, which is the JSON one. Um, and then um, from there, we can set the on message listener to that message listener there, and then when that comes in, that'll have an event um, that has some information on it. There's a, there's a data object on it, um, which will be the message from the sender, as well as uh, the, uh, an ID for the sender, which can anybody guess what that might be called? I know it's tough. Sender ID, actually. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. So, and then you know, on, the mess on your on message, you, uh, you would do something with it. So in our case here, um, simulating keys and keystrokes on the receiver app is probably the most um, uninvasive uh, solution to, uh, to do this, where you don't actually have to go into any of the Quintus game code to you know, modify and how to move the guy around. So you're just simulating uh, the keystrokes up, down, left, right. Uh, and this little bit of code here I got from Stack Overflow was very handy. Um, so I can, um, you know, so you, you give it a key code and it knows whether or not you did a press, uh, key press up, key press down and it simulates the, the thing. So then on the sender app, um, basically, I'm just adding a uh, listener for a key up or a key down uh, event on the whole document. So whenever I'm just using the keypad, it will figure out which keystroke it was, and then it'll send it along the message bus to the uh, receiver app, and it does its thing. So um, let's take a look at what that might look like. And 
yeah, so this is actually the first video I made, and uh, I was getting fancy with the whole mouse pointer thing. Um, and then, yeah, then I got lazy after that. But um, So we hit the little play button here, and a little Chromecast extension thing pops up saying, okay, here's your available Chromecast. You click on that, and then the picture-in-picture -picture thing loads up, which you can do in iMovie, which I thought was awesome. So anyway. Um, so now, uh, after I turn on my little uh, keystroke thing, as, you, as I'm moving, you can see the guy move. And what's interesting is that the first few moves is actually very, a little bit slower. And after that, it must be things get fully loaded. Uh, the frame rate actually gets quite a bit better um, there. I, it's obviously not the same as uh, running it on your, um, which we call it device, or your laptop or something, but this actually works and doesn't actually look too bad, which is kind of cool. So again, I'm actually controlling this from my laptop which is in that picture and picture thing, and the guy's just moving around. Of course, I'm not very good at the game, uh, so he likes to fall and whatever. So I'll just skip past the next time I die. All right, cool, so all right. So it moves, all right, nice. So, um, so there's a few observations you can make from there. Uh, the frame rate is a little bit lower. It's actually uh, about 15 to 20 frames per second. Um, you can actually, the way I figured it, well, you can, there's, um, you can actually debug what's on the Chromecast through like Chrome DevTools. You would go to a particular, uh, you go to the IP address of the Chromecast and a certain port and DevTools pops up and you just turn on the, uh, the show frames per second. So, but it's about 15 to 20 frames per second, um, which isn't good, but it isn't actually bad. That actually looked pretty decent for playing. Um, you know, another thing is probably using like your iPhone or something to control it would probably be a lot better than than using your laptop, because you could always just play it on your laptop, you know, whatever. Um, right. So, but the thing is, the message bus actually doesn't, message bus doesn't actually go just one way, uh, since it is a WebSocket kind of thing. It goes both ways. So here, so with that thinking, we can also add sort of maybe some feedback for the user. So what about like a mini-map or something, um, and show, where on screen, you know, the, the guy is. So this is a very, 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 very rough demo of this concept here, um, of doing a mini-map. So I connect to the thing, my, my, uh, my receiver app is loading there in the picture in picture. After, once it gets loaded, um, I actually do a little mini-map here, which is actually a copy of the game, but just scaled down. And every time I move here, I'm sending, every time I move on the, the receiver device, what I'm doing is I'm sending a message uh, to the, back to the sender with the position, the X and Y coordinates of the little guy there, Steve, and it moves the X and Y position on the, um, on the sender app, which it could probably could be done a little, probably a little bit better, but it, for the purposes of this uh, talk uh, to show what you can do, it seems to work. I think it'd be cool if you had like kind of maybe like a, like a Zelda type game where it had like a context menu or something and you're playing you know, you're playing the, the game you know, on, you know, on your device or on the TV or whatever, and then on the device itself could be like the actual, you know, um, maybe like the menu list of like, oh, I'm gonna use the bow or I'm gonna use the whatever, which we can be cool. So this opens up to, you know, sort of a dual screen experience, kind of like a Nintendo DS kind of thing. Um, so that kind of thing, but just very, you know, small proof of concept here. So now of course the obvious next question is, is this talk over? is probably people are getting hungry and stuff and whatever. Uh, no, not yet, but almost. Uh, so, the, uh, well, maybe the next obvious question is, what about multiplayer? And, all right, you got it, all right, why not? So with some tweaks to the sender and to the receiver, yada, 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 we now have multiplayer. And yes, I just yada, yada, yada the specifics. So let's just take a look quick at that. As you can see, Yoda is, is, is with us here as well as right here. Just in case anybody was cares about that. Okay, right. So basically, that's the. Um, I'm not showing any picture in picture here because they don't have two device picture in picture on iMovie. Um, so you know, here I'm just moving with the one guy. This is actually running from probably my other computer at home. I connected, and then hey, another. Let's see. Yep, another guy comes online, comes down, and now I'm controlling him with my laptop, or just uh, you know the keypad. So I'm actually you know, trying to do leapfrog, and I'm actually doing this by myself with one hand on one and one hand on the other, so it gets a little crazy. 
uh, you know, and they're gonna play for a little while. So I know one guy's name is Steve. I have another name, the other guy, maybe Steve too or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Stu. <laughs> so yeah, they, ooh, yeah, nice little slide there. I'll just play for a minute. Just do that, right? So yeah, the one guy. Oh, they're gonna still do some more leapfrog. Okay, stop. Okay, cool. So then the other guy, he decides to shut his thing off, uh, and he disappears. And that's actually uh, using the, uh, well, I'll show you this next slide. Uh, that's actually using the on uh, sender disconnected method. So it actually removes the player because know, you, we know what the ID of that sender was so we can remove him totally. Uh, right, so the way this is sort of done in a high level thing without getting into the specifics of going into Quintus and figuring out and, and doing all that, uh, they have, Quintus you can do custom components. So I create a custom input component basically for this. Uh, which basically takes the sender ID that was included in the message event and um, you know, um, so, uh, correlates that with a particular player. So when the sender connects, uh, it creates a player for the people. Um, so you could have you know, mul multiple, multiple people um, do that. So, the, if, uh, and so the, one of the goals I kind of had that I couldn't do because of Wi-Fi limitations and conferences and all that stuff, I really wanted to have sort of everybody in, in the audience kind of go to this and, and, have a, and create a player and, and have it move around to see how long it would take before the Chromecast actually melted. Because I don't know, I don't know like, what the limitation is, but alas, conference Wi-Fi. So anyway, you could try at home with your friends and stuff, so. Okay, so some final thoughts on this. Uh, I know we're gonna wrap up pretty soon. Um, you know, why even do this? Why not just mirror the thing? Well, why not? We can do it, so why not? Let's just, let's do this. Um, you know, the device is very small. It's very portable. Um, you know, it's very, very, it's very cheap. So, you know, I'm, I'm basically, I'm just showing you sort of this proof of concept thing, but I think with some actual time put into it, um, maybe some cool games could come out of this kind of thing. Um, and maybe, you know, you can use a different game engine um, you know, I just picked Quintus because obviously it was the first on the list and it happened to work pretty good. Um, but you know, if, you're, if there's some other awesome, cool game engine that's out there that's very, very optimized, um, perhaps the frame rate would even get better. Maybe adding some web workers somehow, and there was a talk on web workers yesterday, so maybe you know, if you had a library that used that, um, you know, things can get better. So there's a lot of cool experiments, I think, that we could probably do uh, as a community and figure this out. Um, and it's not an entirely new idea, actually. This is, um, this is out there currently, right now, um, for uh, this, the actual sender app is on, your, on an Android device. And you would connect to it, and you could play sort of a couple of these games. Um, you know, they're, they're very, very basic, like this little shooting game thing. There's a, like Tetris or something on there, too. So, you know, so things are out there, people are doing it. Um, but I haven't seen any platforming kind of games, and I think that'd be like, a really cool thing to do. Um, you know, just plug in and all your games are you know, kind of in the cloud. And, and hey, if this device like gets more power to it, then you could, you know, the games could, you can get more sophisticated. So I think that'd be cool. All right, so that, thank you very much. Uh, that's my daughter as Bumblebee Girl. Um, so if you want to learn more, the, you know, there's links to the Chrome Dev repo and uh, all, all those video examples are on YouTube and uh, the actual demos that I've showed with the code will be on GitHub soon. Um, when, 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 I put, when these slides go out to the, uh, J, uh, the, the actual website for the link, uh, the link to the GitHub repos will be in there. I just need to tag some things and, and actually clean some things up. So, so uh, that's it, any, uh, any questions? Yeah, right there. No, yeah. Um, so yeah. So there is SDKs for iOS and Android. Um, so yeah. So using you know using Cordova, you, obviously you would have your your web app uh, you know in that little shell, um, but you essentially be using the iOS SDK or the or the Android SDK depending on whatever your whatever your thing is. Yeah, right there. 
Well, it's to your receiver app. Um, depending where you have your receiver app hosted, like I mean, if if you're just doing it like in your house or something on your local network, it's uh, it's just going over, it's just going over the, you know, the local network, or whatever. Uh, this this uh, this example, this receiver was actually running um, on OpenShift, which is Red Hat's cloud thingy. Um, so it was running out there. Um, but I did do some testing where it's just local host. So it depends. It depends where you're hosting your receiver app. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. So go forth and create cool stuff and